Welcome back. It's the 10th of January, our first online service together for 2021. If you've been away on holidays, we hope and pray you had a great time away, plenty of rest and relaxation. If you're still away on holidays, thanks for dialing in and joining us. Hope you're enjoying the great outdoors and your family and friends, whatever you're doing. Today is going to be a great service. Uh, Bretto is going to bring a word on truth. Your truth is not the truth. Powerful and impacting message. A couple of songs of worship and then we'll be wrapping it up um, after that. Um, so stick around. It's going to be great. Next Sunday is the 17th of January and it is our first in-person service for 2021. If you're around, be there. It's going to be awesome. Can't wait to have you there. Um, if you want to continue to give through January while we're not in person, make sure you do so on the Kingsway website, kingsway.org.au. Uh, love you to re-engage in that as we start the new year and we start it well. Also on the 24th of January in two weeks' time, we have the CEO of Common Grace, Brooke Prentice, coming to speak. Um, and that's going to be a wonderful service as well. So there's heaps coming up. It's going to be a great January. Can't wait to have you with us. Uh, but great to have you online right here, right now. So enjoy the service.
friends, church, family, how are you? It's um, great to be with you in this way. And I'm not 100% sure where this message is going to land um, and where we're going to use it, but I really have felt I needed to get this message out. And, and maybe it's just as much uh, for me as it is for anyone else. Um, but this message has been something that has been stirring in me uh, for quite a number of months. And I was um, down to bring this message to preach, speak uh, here at um, Caringbar um, on the day that my father passed away um, about six weeks ago. And on that uh, Sunday morning when I got the news, I just didn't feel I had uh, the capacity to be able to bring and speak. Um, and so I kind of parked this message, but I haven't been able to shake this message. It's very rare that I wake up at night, um, but what <laughs> this message has kept me up at night uh, on numerous occasions over the last number of weeks, um, and particularly before that, uh, as I was preparing uh, to speak here um, in late September. So here it is. It's a message about truth, and I'm just going to run you through my thoughts, and I hope that this message does challenge you because I think it is, in my perspective, a challenging message. John 8, 32 says, For if you embrace the truth, it will release more freedom into your lives. And so for me, there's this question around, what is truth? What is truth? Because if the Bible teaches us that you know, the truth will set you free, it will release more freedom into your lives, then I believe that it's important that we embrace truth and live that out. Now, my simple deduction, um, first and foremost, is out of John 14, verse 6, where Jesus explained, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No one comes next to the Father except through union with me. To know me is to know my Father too. So when I ask this question, you know, what is truth? What is the truth that truly sets us free from this text? My thinking is that the truth is actually a person. It's not a doctrine. It's not a set of beliefs. It's not my opinions or deductions or conclusions around Scripture even. It's actually my relationship with Jesus. That truth in and of itself is a person, not a process, not a doctrine, not a set of things that we need to do, a bunch of rules. That to be truly set free means to truly know Jesus, which means we would truly know God. So what is your truth? And I guess this is my challenge. And I think some of what I'm sharing today comes out of, you know, what we're seeing in the world around us. You know, the challenges that we are seeing in how I believe when I look at the world currently, it feels to me like our world is very divided. I feel like more than ever, there's so much division around the world as we know it. And I'm not just talking locally, I'm talking globally. And I think the stress and worry and uncertainty of this COVID season, for me, feels like it's increased this sense um, of division around the world. So what is your truth? You know, and if you like, I would put your personal truth as this little tiny dot down the bottom. You know, we all have a personal truth. There are things that we believe to be true. And what I find interesting about this when I look back over my own life is that my own personal truth has continued to evolve. It's continued to be shaped and it's continued to be challenged. And so the things that I believe to be true about God, about faith, about church, about relationships when I was 21 are very different to the things that I believe to be true about those things now in my 50s. You know, our personal truth is developed via our experiences, by our relationships, 
by our upbringing, you know, what we've been told. You know, so often we form um, our own personal truth around what other people tell us or what we've been told growing up or what we've been taught from the pulpit. You know, and, and the things that create that sense of certainty and safety for us often shape what it is that we believe to be true. And ultimately what we want is for our personal truth to sit inside of God's truth. It's interesting when you look back at the history of the church, it's not God's truth that has created division. It's our own personal truth. It's the things that we have adopted as truth over the years. Things like worship or spiritual gifts, governance, leadership, finances, speaking in tongues, grace, music, inclusion, fashion, power, homosexuality, creation, hell, end times, gender equality, etc., etc., etc. And what we find is that all of us develop our own personal truths about these things based on the relationships we have with others, based on the things that we read, based on our interpretation, the way we read Scripture what other people have told us, how we've been brought up. We all have a different opinion or a different deduction, a different understanding, a different view, a different personal truth about so much in our lives. John 16 says, you know, there is so much more that I would like to say to you, but it's more than you could grasp at this moment. But when the truth-giving Spirit comes, so the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Jesus, He will unveil the reality of every truth. Now, what I find interesting and challenging for us as a community of faith, for the church generally, the church globally, the world globally, is that we all seem to come to a different conclusion around what is truth. And I think that's okay. I think we need to embrace that. I think we need to embrace the fact that people have different experiences, that people have different upbringings, that people's journeys are different, and so therefore their personal truth is different. But the important thing, the challenging thing, I believe, for us is that an understanding is that my personal truth doesn't completely fit inside of God's truth. That's the journey, right? That's my journey. My journey is I want my personal truth. I want everything that I believe to be true about life, about faith, about church, about God's Word, about relationships, about ministry, about leadership, about worship, about spiritual gifts. I want all of that to fit inside God's truth. But the challenge for me is that that's a journey because I look back at my life and there were times in my journey where I believed certain things that I don't believe sat inside of God's truth. But at the time, I thought they did. (laughs) And that's the problem, right? That's the challenge, is that there are people that hold personal truths about certain things. And these are the things that I believe have divided the church, whether that be personal truths about politics, whether it be personal truths about governance or leadership or worship style. We bring in our own experiences and our own understandings, our own personal opinions, deductions and experience, and our personal truth, and we claim it to be God's truth. And I think that's really dangerous. Our personal truth is not the truth. This has been, for me, a massive revelation. What I believe to be true about everything is not necessarily the truth. What you believe to be true about everything is not necessarily the truth. Now, I believe that there are some absolute truths that most of us, as followers of Jesus, I think, would agree upon. But I also think that there's a lot of gray area in life. And I believe that it's often the gray area that causes 
the most challenge and the most division and the most upset and the most offense is as soon as I start to believe that my personal truth, my personal revelation, what I believe to be true about life, about church, about faith, about anything is the truth, then I will live that out in some pretty, I believe, unhealthy, unresourceful ways. What we tend to do when our personal truth is threatened, we tend to do two different things. We either retreat so that we can preserve and protect our personal truth, or we attack to convince and control. And so when our personal truth, whether that be, you know, our personal truth about homosexuality, our personal truth about speaking in tongues, our personal truth about the end times or creation or a number of different things where there is so many different views, opinions and perspectives, which are all okay with me if we can have the dialogue about learning what it means to live those things out together. But when we begin to say, my truth is the truth, that my perspective is the truth, that my opinion is the truth, and when my personal truth is threatened, then I will either try to preserve and protect, or I will try to convince and control. You know, as I said before, I think the world seems more divided than ever. You know, this increasingly uncertain time, there's so much division and differing of opinions that is going on around our world. And these are just a few of those, injustice and power and global warming, COVID, racism, equality, religion, poverty, etc., etc. There seems to be so much more divide and anger and frustration and attack and retreat and people feeling like they need to defend themselves or attack other people. This con you know, context of my truth is the truth, we are seeing played out in so many different arenas and areas across our world. And I'm not just in the church. We see this in the political realm. We see this impacting all of these where people have this idea that their truth is the truth. And it kind of happens where these clusters of conformity, comfort and control happen. You know, where people group together with people that will support and, you know, back up and and fight for what we believe to be true. And we have all these, you know, different groups around the world. And we have all these different groups, you know, in Christendom. We have all these different groups sometimes within uh, a church. We have all these different groups in our community where people come together uh, in agreement and conformity because it's going to give them a sense of comfort and this sense of control so that they can, you know, live out their truth as the truth. And it just creates division. It creates confusion. And I definitely think that in the context of who God calls us to be as a church where unity is so critical, you know, when the prayer um, that Jesus prays in John 17 is all about, you know, that we would be one, like Jesus is one with the Father, that the church would be united, that we would be perfectly one. Because through that oneness, the world will know that God loves them. That's what Jesus prays. And to me, that's an incredible truth. That if we can put aside our personal opinion, deduction, even our interpretation and go, you know what? I'm okay with the belief that my truth is not the truth. I'm okay with the journey of helping you and help you helping me discover the truth by coming to a conversation where I'm prepared to put aside what I think is true so that I can develop and engage and grow and become all that God has called and created me to be, fulfilling that purpose in my life. So in a sense, we need these collectives of diversity, opposition, and chaos. (laughs) We need people not 
to be in groups of conformity where they, you know, cheer one another on about their personal truth, declaring that what we hold in our hands is the truth. We actually need these people to come together with their difference of opinion, with this sense of diversity, with, you know, even this opposition and chaos and come to that place with this idea that we are going to work together and wrestle with one another so that we can discover what it is that we need to do to heal the world, to serve the poor, to create equality, to solve the big issues in our world and on our planet and the issues in our families and our churches. Collectives of people that are prepared to be open to the thought that their personal truth is not the truth. Where we come together with this heart to listen, to learn, and to love. You know, I believe that the church is called to lead this example. I believe that the church at the forefront should be leading these collectives where people are prepared to come together with this revelation that my personal truth is not the truth. And I'm going to come and I'm going to listen. I'm going to learn. And I am going to love. In fact, I'm going to put other people before myself. I think that in our culture is a challenge. Philippians 2 says this, Be free from pride-filled opinions. And I have to tell you that when I see people banging on about their personal truths, it's filled with pride. It's not about other people. It's not even about what necessarily God wants. It's about what they feel safe and comfortable in protecting or controlling. For they will only harm your cherished unity. Amen. We see that. Don't allow self-promotion to hide in your hearts, but in authentic humility, put others first and view others as more important than yourselves. Abandon every display of selfishness. I love this bit. Possess a greater concern for what matters to others instead of your own interests. You know what that says? That says have a greater concern for what someone else's personal truth is than what your own personal truth is. And have that dialogue. Come together let go of pride. Let go of what it is that you think is right. All of us. I have to do this. This is a challenge for me. And I think one of the reasons why it keeps me up at night or has kept me up at night is because I, am, I need to live this out. You know, I am walking into environments and experiences all the day, that, every day that challenge this in the church, in the community, in the workplace, in the family. You know, I'm called to be free from these pride-filled opinions where I believe that my personal truth is the truth. And I need to come to these conversations with a concern for what matters to others instead of my own interests. This is the challenge about truth. You know, I believe that God wants to empower us as his church. He wants to empower you in your journey as a follower of Jesus. He wants us to lead in a different way. He wants us to put aside, not surrender or give up our personal truth, but put aside the idea that my truth is the truth and have conversations and collectives and, and, and wrestle and collaborate. And be creative in the midst of this crisis, in the midst of the chaos that that will bring, where our opinions are different and where we are passionate about our personal truth. But to come to those conversations with an open heart, to learn, to listen, and to love, so that we can truly and fully live out what I believe we need to live out to be the city on a hill that cannot be hidden. 
where we will set an example to the rest of the world at what it means to be as one and that we would know the truth, which is Jesus Christ. Amen. Thanks so much for joining us today. What a great time we've had together. And I told you it was a great word from Bretto. Next week, Sunday, 17th. Don't forget, if you're around, be in church. It's going to be a great time regathered for 2021 in person. Can't wait to see you there.